Okay. Yes. So whenever we say that uh, we have involved in the payroll module, generally they'll ask you in which legislation you have worked with the payroll module. UK legislation, we can say. UK legislation is not having much uh, complex. It's very simple. Not much complex UK legislation. And uh, maximum 80% uh, the concepts are same, but legislation rules and the tax calculations uh, might be different uh, based on the legislation. Because uh, when you are paying the salaries to employees, uh, salary structures and mandatory elements and uh, uh, deduction cards, calculation cards are different from one country to another country. And naming conventions also different. Okay, so in India, we'll call it as a PF, Provident Fund. When it comes to US, we'll just, we'll call it as a uh, 402 uh, calculation cards that we'll find it. So generally, they'll ask you when you say, I worked with the payroll module, what is the legislation you have involved in the payroll? And uh, obviously, they'll expect what is LDZ, Legislative Data Group, uh, PSU, uh, payroll, uh, statutory unit, uh, what is PSU? Can we uh, assign legal entity to the LDZ uh, here? Uh, or is it PSU only can be associated with the LDZ? Only PSUs can be associated with the LDZ, right? Is it mandatory to assign our uh, PSU to LDZ? Yes, otherwise we cannot hire employees. It will show error message. Your legal entity is not associated, uh, uh, is not associated with the legislative data group, okay? And what are the payment methods? We have personal payment method, and then we have organization payment method, third-party payment methods here, and payroll definitions while creating payroll definitions, offset details, nothing but uh, the dates, right? Earning date, uh, as well as the payroll schedule date, cutoff date, pay slip availability date, payroll run date, date earned, and date paid. We'll find all these uh, offset details at the time of creating the payroll definitions. We did write payroll definitions. And what are these all dates? Okay. And then when it comes for, uh, you know, when it comes for element creation, so whenever we are creating an element, uh, what is recurring element, what is non-recurring, and when we are working with element by default, internally some elements will be created here. It is, uh, and we will be talking about uh, the elements uh, options. What are the mandatory after creating element? Input value is mandatory. Element eligibility is uh, mandatory. Here we are going to configure eligibility, element eligibility. And we'll also talk about uh, the element uh, dates, like uh, LSP, last standard process date, what is the uh, actual termination date, and what is final closing date. For example, uh, employee is, we are going to terminate an employee on 16th February. Uh, 16th February is actual termination date. And when you run the payroll, we don't run on 16th itself, right? We'll run the payroll on 28th. That's the last payroll we'll run. We call it as a last standard process for the L employee, LSP, last standard process date. After one month, we are going to do the settlement. March 31st, we are going to do final close. F and F, full and final settlements. So here, three dates will come. Actual termination date is February 16th, 28th. February is the last standard process date. March 31st will be the final close date. Whenever we are going to create an element, the system will ask us, the system will ask us, uh, this element is valid up to which date? If you say it's valid uh, up to actual termination date, so if you try to make the payment after actual termination date for the those days, it won't allow. Okay, or if it is LSP up to last, uh, whatever the payroll you are running, last payroll for the employee, that, that's going to be here it is, right? So these questions they'll definitely expect, excuse me. What are the payroll flows? What is meant by payroll flow? It's a group of payroll programs, which we regularly run. 
at the time of running the payroll. It's not only just calculate the pay salaries to the employees and uh, distribute the uh, salary to the employee, right? First, whenever we start payroll running, first we have to check any previous dated payment, like uh, retro pay activities are there, it will check. Then it will go for calculate the payroll. After that, then it's going to archive the payroll result. Payroll register report will be sent dated. Then it's going to verify whether the payment methods and other things has been configured properly, like bank setups, payment methods, and other. It's like a prepayment. After that, we are going to uh, have the payments, like uh, distributing uh, check payments, distributing the EFT, electronic fund transfer, and also distributing uh, uh, manual payments, like, and then EFT will find out. And after that, uh, uh, payment register report will be generated. Then we'll try to run the report called pay slips, pay slips verification. And then salary accounts needs to be generated, and all these accounts needs to be transferred to GL model. Uh, salary accounts needs to be transferred to GL. This is all we will work here. It is. On different types of payment methods, this now we discussed personal, organizational, third party payment methods we will find over here. And then we are uh, up to we did offsets and recurring, non occurring. What is proration? We have seen retro pay. What is the procedure for proration? What is the procedure for retro pay? These questions uh, we are going to expect from them. And payroll flows execution. How you can assign the payroll to the employees? Uh, in case if you want to assign the payroll to multiple employees through a HDL, technical, technically we can go for attach this over here and then we will be able to perform the things. How the new elements will be added to the employee? We did already, right? We have added earning elements, direction elements, loan elements uh, to the employees and we have executed the payroll uh, to generate the earning as well as the deduction and other options we have seen. Uh, through, as I said, uh, if we have some thousands of employees, through earlier old version, PDL was there. Through payroll data loader, we used to update the payroll to the employees. But when it comes to the uh, HDL, nowadays we are using HDL for data update regarding the payroll and all. We are going to use it here. And then uh, quick pay. So when you want to pay the salaries to the employees, single employee if you want to make the payment only once then it is going to uh, used and then uh, object group is for group of employees standard payroll and how to do the rollback can we create a new payroll flows yes custom payroll flows we can create according to our requirement what level payroll module will be defined so very uh, basic question this is uh, all the payroll setups will be configured at LDZ level, legislative data group. Whenever we are configuring, then we are going to have LDZ legislative data group. Then it's going to be specified here. At LDZ level, it will be mentioned. Okay. So these are uh, the topics. Uh, within the topic, again, a lot of questions will be there. That already we have discussed. Uh, for every topic, there will be an options. Uh, uh, these are topics what I have explained, elements, offset details. And offset details, again, they'll ask you, what is meant by cutoff date? So what is cutoff date? Cutoff date is nothing but a last date for an employee, uh, a payroll information entry. What is the last date for uh, entry? It is that, that we are going to find out over here. Okay, so this is uh, these are the things you can go through for the payroll module over here topics which needs to explain here okay thank you